For centuries, indigenous shamans of the Amazon have sung to ayahuasca, a psychoactive plant mixture believed to heal the mind, body and spirit of those who drink it. The ayahuasqueros regard the plant as a sentient, intelligent being that connects them to the natural world and imparts ancient wisdom through ceremony. Now, people from all over the world are being called to hear the Icaros. And although each experience is unique in itself, those who hear these sacred songs see a common vision and a critical message for humanity. Open your mind and join me on a journey. Let me take you to meet Ayahuasca. The word Ayahuasca comes from Quechua language and it means vine of the soul or spirit vine. And in Quechua language it refers specifically to a vine called Banisteriopsis capi. However, it's also been brought into Spanish language and now English language uh, in reference to a brew prepared from the Banisteriopsis capi vine along with other admixture plants, but most commonly uh, a leaf from the plant Psychotria viridis. In the traditional context, it's also understood to be a, a plant teacher, a spirit behind uh, living within the vine uh, that one can encounter by drinking the brew. I found ayahuasca being in a, a place where life wasn't working out how I wanted it to be. And I had heard uh, from a number of sources that ayahuasca was something that could help. I found it uh, about six years ago, six or seven years ago. It immediately began to help me. I was using it as a tool to uh, discard some of the things that were holding me back and get a clearer idea of my path, my life path and, and what I could do to you know, make the most impact and enjoy my life the most. When my most recent book on addiction was published, uh, I began to receive a lot of uh, inquiries about what I knew about addiction and the use of ayahuasca and the healing of addiction and I knew nothing. Until I was almost tired of the questions. I kept thinking, I just written the book, ask me what I know about, don't ask me what I don't know about. But then it, I had an opportunity to participate in the ceremony. And at the very first ceremony, I understood why people were asking me. My own experience with the plant was such that I got why it would help people with any number of issues. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to drink ayahuasca a number of times and it's one of the most remarkable things I've ever come across. It definitely changed my sense of perception of myself, my relation with others, and in relation with uh, the broader ecological sphere within which we, we inhabit. It's, it's impossible to put into words, though, <laughs> that one of the things about the ayahuasca experience is it defies, defies language. It's fundamentally ineffable. Um, but it's absolutely remarkable. As I started working with ayahuasca for myself and going on my own adventures down in South America, I was approached by some other people. Eventually I started bringing other people down to take ayahuasca and the results were often very positive. So that uh, inspired me to continue. I've achieved a certain degree of, of clarity with this work. I think anyone that has the mission, the passion to bring these plant medicines to other people, I think that's ultimately a good thing because uh, people benefit from these experiences and they become better people. 
Ayahuasca works on multiple levels, uh, physically, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, and probably others as well. <laughs> um, and each time you drink ayahuasca, it can be different. There's a saying that ayahuasca will teach you what you need to know. For about eight years, I've been working with ayahuasca as a healing modality in treatment of addictions, uh, depression, and also in the healing of various physical ailments as well. So my work covers a broad range, all of which have to do with helping people heal. I lead a circle in which we find out why people are there, what were the historical events in their lives, and what are the emotional resonances that they carry or where they're blocked. So I'll, I'll have a certain view of them, a certain take on them, and we help them formulate an intention for the ceremony. The ceremony is led by people who are trained in the Shipibo tradition. It's in the dark. My Awasco colleagues, in order to work with people, have to read their energies. They do so in the dark. And they direct their chants at specific people at specific times in response to what energetic resonance they pick up on. But here's what's astonishing, and it's absolutely universal, that whatever I picked up about people when I was working with them through words and I'm seeing their body language and I'm listening to the tone of their voice. My Oscar or friends will pick up the same things in the dark when the client is not saying anything at all, just based on reading their energies. So they're trained that way. In various Amazonian indigenous traditions as well as the syncretic Brazilian churches, uh, there's always an element of ceremony uh, that's wrapped around the, the ayahuasca drinking experience. People should not be using the plant without the proper setting. And that means under the guidance of people who've trained in the tradition. Indigenous cultures use it uh, predominantly as a medicine. You know, it's a medicine. It's not for the psychedelic or the visionary state. It's Westerners who have been coming down to the Amazon searching for the visions because that's sort of the legacy of the 60s that people wanted to see and feel, but they really didn't believe it in their minds unless they saw something. And it's like, oh, something, you know, something's tangible with that. Um, and so for me, the ayahuasca was very purgative and very healing in some of those first sessions. Uh, but essentially, as it was healing, there's something in the, the neurochemical composition of har harmine and harmaline, which is very heart opening, which is the active chemical constituents in the vine. Um, very heart opening, and I didn't really have a huge visionary experience, which was fine. And for many years, I never had a huge visionary experience. It was what I was feeling. And what I was feeling was opening up all this empathic body. So I learned when I trained with and reported on indigenous cultures, you know, their cosmology, they believe that there's an energetic body, there's an emotional body, there's a physical body, there's all these gradations of being. And sickness and disease comes out in your physical body as a port of last call. And so when you want to do the healing, it's not just that say ayahuasca is helping you heal, it does clean you out physically and you're purging and cleansing the body and it goes through the liver, but it's also helping bring up the subconscious mind. I found a modality with the help of which I can get people to understand themselves and see themselves and see new possibilities for themselves in their period of seven to eight days over three ceremonies much more rapidly than I could over years of talking with them. And so I do that. And then and although I, it's only a small part of my overall work, it's also the most exciting part because the transformations are so dramatic. Having said that, there's no panacea, and this isn't the panacea either, because the realizations now need to be applied in real life. The realizations have to be made real. They have to be integrated and incorporated. 
and that, given the nature of our culture and given people's ingrained tendencies, is always a challenge. But it's an opening that happens that is otherwise hard to attain. Well, there's really two different streams of, of uh, efficacy uh, with, these, with these plants. There's the, the scientific aspect and the, and the spiritual aspect. Scientifically, they're, they're changing brain activity patterns and, and forging new connections. There's research behind this, more and more research actually in the past couple of years. It's, it seems like every week there's a new article coming out saying that uh, mushrooms can fight depression, that psychedelics can help forge new brain connections, and ayahuasca can grow brain cells and things like that. There are some psychological advantages to doing this. People come and, and can re-experience uh, past traumas or blockages that they've that they brought in with them and look at those in a different light or perhaps connect with the part of themselves that has been buried by whatever negative energies or programs have been acquired through life. I mean everybody, all of us, we, we collect these these things and we, we all have struggles and, and challenges and problems. By going through the medicine experience, some of those things can be rectified. For uh people of relatively good mental health um, and even people who are struggling with certain kinds of mental health issues, um, ayahuasca, like, like anxiety or depression or post-traumatic stress disorder or addictions, uh, ayahuasca might be actually something really valuable uh, for them to um, have an opportunity to look at the roots of, of some of those illnesses. Western uh, biomedicine does a good job of masking symptoms you know, with our various pharmaceutical medications that can allow people to have, in some cases, a, a perhaps better life than they would have otherwise. Uh, but often it's at the cost of you know, medications taken on a daily basis for months or years sometimes without ever resolving uh, where those illnesses may have come from. As a Western trained medical doctor and was in practice for over three decades, um, I can tell you both about the miraculous achievements of Western medicine and also about its limitations. So the achievements we don't have to address, they're amazing. The limitations, however, are immense. Ayahuasca seems to get more to exploring where some of the roots of those uh, pathologies come from and giving people an opportunity to explore that and process it in a way that helps resolve some of the underlying issues and, and lead to longer term uh, healing without the need to resort to pharmaceutical interventions. The, the plant, ayahuasca, is not specific to any one particular human condition. It's not, it's not like it's a treatment for addiction, or it's a treatment for depression or cancer or anything else. What it is is a way to get to know yourself more deeply. When it comes to chronic conditions of mind and body, Western medicine is largely helpless. We can mitigate, alleviate symptoms, but that's about all we can do. You don't know how to help people heal. The traditional medicinal practices, uh, not just in the Amazon Basin, but in North America and elsewhere, are actually better at evoking people's inner healing capacities. Um, so they provide something that Western medicine doesn't. There's also an aspect of spirituality to the medicine where people can connect with something bigger than themselves. I don't think you can have these, have these experiences with ayahuasca or also even study these systems uh, without having a spiritual aspect to it. Because when you take ayahuasca in nature and you have this sort of mystical revelation about our relationship with nature and about nature, there are certain sort of responses that result for that. One of them is a biophilia, you know, which is love for life. You know, we have an inherent affection for living things. And then there's a feeling that everything is intelligent, that, in, that you know, it, it's, the term is animism, actually. And indigenous people generally have an animistic outlook on life. In their worldview, everything is intelligent. Plants, animals, people, uh, you know, rocks, weather, they're all a expression of an inherent intelligence built into nature. 
So you can call that atomism. And then pantheism is the other umbrella term for the feeling that, yes, nature is divine. There is a divine. It's not separate from nature. It is nature. You know, God is built into nature, if you want to put it that way. God didn't, some outside entity didn't come along and create the universe. The universe is it waking up to itself. God is inherent in the structure of the cosmos. So that's a spiritual outlook. And interestingly enough, it's the indigenous outlook. And it's the psychedelic worldview as well. They put an individual in direct contact with something transcendent, something divine, if you will. This is a result of empirical observation. You know, the, these are not, this is not like what we believe, it's that this is what we experience. It's obvious. And it's actually closer to a, an accurate scientific understanding now, which has taken a long time to to evolve because for a long time science has been trying to deny spirit but now they're being forced to acknowledge that spirit exists particularly in where psychedelics is concerned they have to acknowledge that there is a spiritual aspect to healing that's what these things are they are medicines for the spirit for the soul